Here with Garrett Sashray, defensive ends coach. Welcome to Cal, coach. Oh, glad to be here. Every time somebody says welcome to Cal, it's, it's music to my ears. So uh, thank you for uh, welcoming me. You were the last addition on staff. Did it take you a little while to get caught up with everybody else who was here initially? Uh, not really. It's a bunch of good guys. Some of the guys I've already known. Obviously, I've known Coach Dykes a while. And, and so some of the guys I've known, but uh, the guys I didn't know are great guys. Uh, uh, been in the coaching fraternity a while, so you got to make sure you go and, and adapt and adjust the staff you're involved in. And, and if the guys have opened, uh, you know, met me with open arms. So I'm really excited to be here. We're all appreciative to be here. We all are in the same boat thinking that we can do some special things here. So it's easy to, to kind of, you know, become part of that melting pot when everybody sees what kind of special place we have and what, what we can accomplish. You've got a staff that seems to genuinely like each other too. Does that make it a lot easier to adapt? Yeah, and that's what I said when you got good people and, and no egos and guys are just trying to win. Uh, they're worried about the university, they're worried about the kids in the university and the fans. Uh, achieving what everybody wants us to achieve and what everybody thinks we can achieve and that's you know a, a Pac-12 championship, uh, a Rose Bowl, a, a national championship run. Uh, we didn't come here for anything else and, and uh, so we feel like that there's you know ultimate goals that we all want to achieve so it's easy to get together and, and go after them. So you coach with Coach Dykes in Arizona right? Yes, I uh, coach with Coach Dykes at uh, what's now called Louisiana Monroe but it's Northeast Louisiana at the time and then coached again with him at uh, U of A in Arizona. So you've been in the South a lot of your career, but you had some exposure to the league when you're with him there. How different a brand of ball is Pac-12 Pac ball versus what uh, you've been playing in the South? Uh, yeah, you know, I tell you, because I, I started my co coaching career in Pennsylvania. So I've been around, you know, ball is ball and plays are plays, you know. I mean, nobody's running anything different in one region of the country as compared to the other. Uh, I would, the one thing I would say, though, is that I think the people in the East Coast and the people in the South uh, uh, are a little bit biased to the East Coast and the South and think that and a lot of times that's the only place that football is played. Like the West uh, Coast is soft. Well, I don't know about soft, but, you know, the games come on so late, they're, <laughs> they're sleeping. But, but basically, uh, I think the football when you start talking about X's and O's, when you start talking about coaching, when you start talking about execution and the talent of the players, um, you know, I, I think it's, to me, doesn't have to take a backseat to anybody. And any friend of mine or anybody in coaching that's come from one of those regions, especially the South and, 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 and the back East, uh, uh, they agree with me that, uh, well, even guys in Texas in the Big 12 and that kind of thing, when they come out here, same thing, I think, we're all pleasantly surprised, uh, and we're excited about the talent and the coaching here, and we really think that the conference uh, is someone that shouldn't take a backseat to anyone. Um, uh, so uh, it's one of those things where once you get out here and once you play in the conference and once you play the coaching, and I think you know the proof is in the pudding. Some years you can see that when the conferences play each other in the bowl games, how many wins the Pac-10 at one time or the Pac-12 have now compared to the other ones or when they go head to head. I think the proof is in the pudding then. So you have a broad base of experience coaching a lot of different positions. Can you talk about what positions you've coached and how that translates well to what you're doing now? Well, I tell you, that's part of survival in the coaching. Uh, <laughs> being in 20, 21 years myself, uh, I've coached a lot of uh, positions. Uh, started off in defense, did a lot of defense, then went to special teams, then did a little offense, uh, then went back to offense and defense. Now, um, it's one of those things that uh, helps you, though. Uh, my ultimate goal is to be a head coach one day, and I think it'll help then. But I tell you, it helps. When I'm coaching defense now, I talk to these guys from an offensive perspective and let them know what the offenses are looking for and looking at and what they're trying to do. Um, and when I coached offense, I did the same thing. And I think the more you can educate a young man on make on what the opposition is trying to do, whether it's the team you're playing every Saturday or in spring game, the other side of the ball, they feel like they're smarter, they play better, that knowledge helps them, and they become better players. When it comes to special teams, special teams is it's special because of a number of reasons. Uh, it encompasses everything that football uh, entails. Playing in the open field, bending your knees, leverage, angles, uh, getting on blocks, getting off blocks, making tackles. And it's the only time that offensive and defensive kids play together. 
It's the only time offensive and defensive kids meet together. So you're talking about guys who don't usually uh, play together and meet together, getting together, coming together, and as a team facing someone else who offensive and defensively getting together. So it's team against team more than offense against a defense and a defensive against offense. And so it's also um, something special because a lot of times you have the guys who are trying to make a name for themselves. This is their way to get out on the field under the lights and, and show, hey, I belong in the Pac-12 and I can do this. And uh, it gives their parents a chance to see them play against whoever it might be. So it's, it's special from that standpoint because you really get a chance to see the kids who are prime time players and who are the players to come, uh, whether it's at Cal or anywhere else, the guys you're going to be having starting for you on offense and defense. Uh, in the coming years. So you guys are doing something different on the defensive line this year than Cal fans are used to, breaking up the defensive tackles from the defensive ends with Coach Sachs coaching mm -hmm. the inside and you on the outside. Mm -hmm. What's the philosophy behind that? Well, the philosophy basically is is that uh, uh, there's three main positions when you look at defense. It's a, it's, there's the D-line, there's the linebackers, and the secondary. Okay. Well, most defenses have four defensive coaches. So it, it, I don't care if, you, if you're looking at the, whoever, it doesn't matter. There's going to be either two secondary coaches, two linebacker coaches, or two D-line coaches. Um, you know, we're doing two D-line coaches. A buddy of mine's at Florida State, they're doing two D-line coaches. You can go to another school, they may have two linebacker coaches, an inside linebacker coach and an outside linebacker coach. You can go to some other schools and they have a corners coach and a safeties coach. People don't think about that, but there's usually four coaches coaching on defense. There's usually five on offense, but usually one of those guys is tied into special teams. It's usually a tight end guy some kind of way. So that's, that's just kind of the norm as far as defenses around the country. Somewhere they're splitting it up. Uh, it just happens to be here. We do it with the D-line. Cal, the coordinators have usually been specialists rather than in a position. So that, that's been the main difference, having two guys at one position. But does that allow you to focus on certain techniques and certain areas with the defensive ends that you might not have been able to drill as hard if you were just a, a straight uh, defensive line coach? Well, what happens is, is I think that is true. But what, happens, what, I, what happens is it depends on your defense. And so we're going to be doing some different things uh, with the defensive ends uh, that we're going to do with the tackles. Uh, and then, you know, not to let too much out of the bag, but, but so there were going to be some times when in a meeting, um, uh, if they were all together, one would not be getting the attention that the other deserves. And when you get out in the practice field, the one would not get it, be getting the attention that the other deserves. Whereas you split it up now, the defensive end coach can coach the defensive ends on all the special things, and the defensive tackle coach can coach the tackles on some special things. Uh, and that's really the reason uh, for doing it. It's trying to maximize um, what the players will do and maximize what the defense can do. Um, so that's, that's really basically it in a nutshell. Like I said, some people break it up in many different ways. Like you said uh, in the past here, the coordinators, what you call a walk around meaning they didn't coach a position, they just walked around and everybody else coached a position. Whereas at a lot of schools, and like Coach Boo, as you can tell, and obviously uh, Coach Franklin, they coach a position. A lot of coaches like to stay hands-on. Uh, coach Boo is coaching linebackers, which are the quarterbacks of the defense, and um, Coach Franklin obviously is coaching the quarterback. So a lot of guys want to stay hands-on. They feel like they can have a pulse of the team. And uh, Honestly, to be honest with you, a lot of times these guys who walk around, they get bored. They want to coach somebody. Yeah. <laughs> so rather than jump in somebody's drill, they say, I'm going to just keep my own position. Okay. So can you talk a little bit about the guys that switched to defensive end? You've got some outside linebackers that made the move to defensive end. You've also got some defensive end that move, move, made the move to the, the interior. Can you talk a little bit about those moves? Well, it's, it's really a scheme. It's really a scheme and a numbers issue. Uh, they're here, we're here with a three-man front with four linebackers, and now we've kind of switched those numbers around. We're a four-man front with three linebackers. Um, so naturally, when you start talking about outside linebackers in a 3-4, those guys were up on the line of scrimmage. They were just standing up. Well, all we're doing is we're putting them back up on the line of scrimmage, but we're putting them in a three-point stance. And so uh, we will be multiple. You will see us do different things with the front. You'll see us do different things with coverage uh, that will complicate offenses and keep offense on their toes. But basically, in, an essence, that, in essence, that's basically it. But obviously, someone has to fill the role of the defensive end position. 
you have a, n a large number of people at linebackers when you're talking about four positions, now we're going to three. Well, to give people a chance to get on the field, to give people a chance to really show their talents and get out there and do what we want them to do and help Cal win some games, we had to move some people around. Um, I'm not saying the moving isn't done. Uh, we're still kind of playing around, being mad scientists and figuring out who can do what best. Uh, when you recruit to a certain system uh, and then change to another system, uh, you just have to maneuver. It's just like going from an offense that has a tight end and two backs to going to a one back offense with no tight ends. Those guys have to go somewhere. You know, that those extra running backs, if they want to play, they don't want to be one of eight running backs. They want to go somewhere where maybe they can play. That tight end has to find a place to play when there's no tight end in the offense. Either he's going to be a tackle or he's going to be a receiver or he's going to go to defense. And it's just a, a matter of scheme changing and the kids having to adapt with it. So you've got some guys, too, that might not have been a good fit as a nose tackle in, in the 3-4 that make a great fit as a defensive tackle in a 4-3, like Moose moving inside and some of the other guys. Correct, correct. You know, because uh, uh, what, what uh, in a 3-4 you might call a defensive end, uh, and a four-man front is really a defensive tackle. You're still on the edge of the guard and you're doing some different things. Uh, but yes, it does add to the fact that some people that uh, maybe were undersized in a certain defense are a perfect size in, in another defense. And some people that were maybe uh, smallish in some defenses are just a perfect size in others or big, maybe too big in one defense. Like, ah, he's a little bit too big. In other defenses, he's just right. Uh, maybe too slow in one, perfect speed in the other. Maybe too fast in one, or not fast. You know what I mean, sir? It just works like that. Just wrapping up here, um, not only do you work with a, a staff of quality guys, but they're pretty funny guys, too. Have you had some pretty pretty f funny experiences with these guys so far? Yeah, yeah. No, we've had some great times. And, and if, if you can laugh as a staff, that makes all the difference in the world. And the reason I say that is because here pretty soon the bullets are going to start flying for real. And you've got to be able to laugh about some things and keep it lighthearted. And, and we all go through situations where we're, you know, very intense and stressed out. And you need someone or different people at different times to make it lighthearted and understand the big picture. And to just like everyone in their life, you need sometimes a, a little dose of reality. And sometimes levity is the way to do that. And uh, so we're always joking around. We're always making fun of each other and ourselves. Uh, I think that's important, too, to make fun of yourself. And I, um, because then people know when you make fun of them, it's not a personal thing. Yeah. But in, even in the, in, the, in the meeting rooms with my players, I make fun of myself. I'll make, point something out on the screen or make fun of myself. And, and, and people like that, and people know that uh, uh, we're all here to have a good time and we're all in this together. But, yeah, to be honest with you, uh, you got to watch your back around here because if you slip <laughs> up on something, somebody's going to make a, a joke about it. And uh, But we love it. We all laugh. And, and that's why things have worked. Uh, because guys are loose around each other. Guys understand uh, that we're, you know, everybody's got some humor to them and then some funny things about them, and, and nobody takes it personal. And uh, it's allowed us to really gel and come together quicker. One thing that's unusual to see, too, is uh, a lot of defensive line coaches are former defensive linemen themselves, and they're big, lumpy guys. And, and you and Coach Sachs are just average-sized guys. How do you get DeAndre yeah. Coleman's attention when, when like you want to shake him up terriers, a little bit? We're like little rat We're like, uh, we're like yipping. We're like, we're like the, um, I, always, I used to uh, – um, I don't know. You know, I've always coached – well, it's not hard to coach bigger guys, but I've coached a lot of bigger guys, linebackers. The last time, only time I've not coached bigger guys when I coached running backs and, and DBs, and even most of them were bigger. Uh, I, you know, I don't really think about it much. They don't really care. I think they, I think they find us humorous, you know, like we're this, burp, 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 you know, <laughs> yipping at them. But I think it's all about intensity, and I think it's all about knowledge, and I think if they feel like you care for them, and, and Coach Sachs does a great job with this, but we make sure that they know we care for them, off the field, know about their families and ask about their families. And I think if you're intense on the field and you know what you're talking about on the field, uh, I don't think it matters. You know, you could have a big coach who they feel doesn't care about them, a big coach that they don't feel like that they're learning something from, a, a big coach that, that's, you know, laid back on the field, who maybe was, a, you know, a defensive line coach in the NFL or whatever, a coach for years, they're not going to get the most out of them. So I think that, uh, 
you know, like me and Sachs always say, hey, we've been this size all of our <laughs> life. So we're used to people being bigger than us. But I enjoy it. Um, I enjoy it. The bigger they are, the, the bigger teddy bears they are, to be honest with you, uh, whether it's D-line or offensive line. And uh, I really enjoy working with them. Well, Cal fans are real excited to have you guys in here and looking forward to this upcoming season. So uh, welcome here and congratulations. Well, uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, I'm really excited to be here. We're all really excited to be here. Uh, it's a great institution. It's a great area. And uh, we really feel blessed to be here. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you.